another one of these little random jobs that we get once in a while and this is an enormous angle poison lamp It's coming because it's kind of come apart. It was originally threaded on, but this has just got mullered. And I can't get the damn thing off now. Yay. So, yeah, the top of this thread is mullered. And at first, I was kind of hopeful that we could just wind this threaded tube further through, and then this damaged part of the thread we wouldn't really worry about it and we'd have a decent bit of thread lower down to go in the base of the thing that the <laughs> uh, the contraption is uh, fixed to but this thread in here is no good So even though we've got a decent thread going into it, it is not biting because this in here is it's kind of semi-stripped. And at first I thought, well, maybe I'll get a helicoil, put it in there. But looking at this, there's not enough metal in here that the piece is just not thick enough. So, we're going to have to do something else. And also, it would be nice if this thing could swivel. It seemed to be just screwed on solid, which may be contributed to, to it failing. I'm sure I can imagine you wanted to swivel this thing around on the base, as you would in a normal angle poise lamp. They swivel. This thing seemed to be made so that it doesn't swivel, it's all screwed on solid. So we might be uh, seeing if we can do something a bit different here. First thing, we'll get the bottom off so it's a bit more manageable. This um, This thing is, uh, yeah, a bit cumbersome, shall we say. So, let's get this bottom bit off. is under some tension. Maybe we need to take the springs off. Well, that's better. She's out, does it? Yep. Right. And it won't come off of there because that has to come off. Or does it slide off the end? That'll slide off the end, won't it? I think. Oh, 
couple of stop screws in there. Let's loosen them off a bit. Now that one's not doing anything anyway. Yay! Right. I wonder, will this come off? How do they get that on there? It's just a cover. get the cap off we might be able to what's going on here oh no it's just stuck on oh you pain I thought there'd be a hole in that and it's all a pre part of the pressing ah okay right what I've decided to do with this is to put a rivet nut inside here where this thread in here is just completely mullered. I'm going to put an M10 rivet nut in there and it's a, a slightly loose fit. Yeah, the OD on these rivets is 13 millimeters and the hole in this piece is getting on for 14, it's about 13.8 or something. But I did a little trial, drilled the 14mm hole in a piece of 3 sixteenths aluminium, pulled that rivet in and that's in there pretty solid I think so we're going to have a go with this and we've got an air powered rivet gun. which is quite neat that you've got, I don't know if you can see this, push and pull handle on it which spins the mandrel at the front. I'm going to put a little dab of oil on there just to make sure that the, the rivet comes out properly. Screw that on there. Into there. Pull the trigger, release it, and that doesn't want to unscrew, come on, I suppose I'd just be able to pull the handle, there we go. And there's our rivet in there, and that looks to me to be pulled up pretty good. Right, next stage. Right, what I'm going to do is put a piece of studding in here, or all thread, as some people like to call it, and lock it in with a, a nut. It's not a lot of room, so I've turned a standard nut down to make a lock nut, half nut. Standard one there, about eight mil thick. About five mil thick. 
I don't know if that's the right size, but that should do the job for what we want. So that can go there, through a bit further I think. That should be okay. So we can put that in there. If I just lock that in, and I want a really an offset. Oh, this is not going to work, is it? I need an offset ring spanner. size spanner and it's too fat to fit in the recess okay I'll have to grind the spanner down um, it's an old cheap spanner draper made in India okay right let's make some room Right, a bit of clearance, ground off around the spanner, so that we can get that in there and lock that in place. That should do. So what I want to do now is get rid of this piece of tube here. It goes through this quite a long way. And it does the job of holding the cover onto the, the base. So that comes through quite a way. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm just going to drop this, cut this off, drop it through here, and put a nut on the bottom. I think we'll put a lot um, a washer between the two pieces. But let's get this chopped down. Right, I've just run a file down the inside of the tube just to take the seam out of it so that this 10mm studding and thread can go through and that's it's a bit of a rubbish bearing really but it's long enough that that I think that's going to work quite well and then at the bottom I will just put I don't know if we need a washer on that I'll just put a nylock nut on here and that will stop it pulling up so I just need to cut that off about there. Let's go do that. Right, let's put this back together. Back through there. and nuts well, I don't suppose I can get a spam on that no, not really it's just got to be finger tight I think that's how, I, how it was before so it goes on there and another nut. Right, 
which kind of spaces this piece on top of the weight, which is plastic covered concrete. So let's see, does that go on there okay? I think the nut needs to go on a bit further. that good enough? Let's try a little bit more. Right, an extra washer underneath the standard one. Let's put that on there. That's about to do that. Do that way around. Yeah, that ain't going to stay there, is it? While I'm... That's it. That is on. Cool. go on there well that's a bit sloppy damn kind of rattly as well ha. well that's a bit rattly so I found a couple of o-rings that if we put one around that knot, and another one on top there, that's a bit of a uh, bit of squish going on there, and then what we need to do. is put a nylock nut on the bottom. Do I need to have a washer on there? I don't think I'll even need to, to have a washer on there. I think we can just do this nut up and that will preload it just sufficiently. There's a bit of adjustment going on there. And that should just pull that down enough to give it a little bit of a resistance. Maybe too much already. Oh no. Yeah, I think I'll slacken that off a bit. might do. Okay, what we've got to do now is assemble the, 
the stalk, or whatever you call it. This ting, put this back on. Right, this thing is all back together now. And it swivels a bit now. I don't know if that's a big deal. If they don't want it to, they can just tighten the nut up underneath. So the only thing I've got to do now last last little thing is to put this cap back on here and it was originally just stuck with a kind of foam pad double sided foam sticky pad thing um, so I've just cleaned the remains of that off from the inside here and the top of that and I'll see if I can find a little bit of double sided tape and we'll plonk that back on top Well, I think that's back on there. No reason why it should come off anyway. It needs to be pulled off. Right. Final job. I think we just need to get this thing off, off the bench and on the floor. Have a final look at it. Well, I wasn't sure whether this thing was intended to work as a just a giant angle poise lamp or was just really a standard lamp kind of just styled to look like an angle poise but it does kind of work this is uh, obviously pulled down and it will stand up so you've got quite a bit of adjustment on it. It's as far as that goes that way. And this can come down here if you wish. And we can swivel it around now. I don't know if that's a biggie. Zip. And sometimes the springs take control and it starts doing things that you don't really want it to do. You've got locking handles on it on the pivots as well. I suppose that kind of helps to uh, keep it in the desired position. Ha! Let's stand him up. That grand view of the workshop. Well, as I like to say, that's another job jobbed. <laughs>